Hey everyone, um, this is Jay Nelson. Um, welcome to Geology 110, I think, Environmental Geology. And I'm going to do a quick, hopefully fairly quick, intro video for you tonight. Just kind of introducing myself and letting to, you know what to expect in the course and my teaching style and all that good stuff. So just to start out, again, I'm Jay Nelson. You'll see John on all the the official documents. My email even has John, but I go by Jay, so whatever, whichever's fine. Um, I'm not very picky about that. Um, in this geology course, <clears throat> we're going to start out talking a lot about, of course, it's a science course, so we're going to get into the science quite a bit. It's not a chemistry course. It's not that in detail as far as you're going to have to do chemical equations and that sort of thing. But we're going to talk about general geology, and the environmental part comes in really in two ways. Um, one is, is environmental geology is how we use the earth, our environment around us, <clears throat> to our advantage. What do we get from the earth? The other aspect is, is not only what we are doing to the earth, but what does the earth do to us? Um, we do a lot of things that affect our environment, as you know. And when we talk about geology, a lot of people just think that's rocks and dirt. Um, we're going to talk about pretty much everything in this course with regards to environment. Because even the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, which is the water cycle, all that is part of geology as well. It all interacts. It's all one big working organism. So we will get into those different types of topics. What I really like to do, and I'll introduce myself a little bit more in just a second, is I really like to focus on the things that we experience here in our local area. So most of my students, when I teach this course, go to Sky, which is South Central Kentucky, which is in Bowling Green. Um, I looked at the roster just briefly. I think we have one or two students from other colleges across, around the state. I think maybe a couple from Bluegrass, if I'm not mistaken, which is good if it's Bluegrass because it has a similar geology as we ha have here in South Central Kentucky, which is a lot of limestone with something called karst. I'll get into that in just a second. But I try to focus on those parts of our lessons and relate them to things that we do here in Kentucky. I think that's more important than us trying to study just everything in such detail that you don't really get anything out of it. And I'll be the first to tell you, I'm kind of an expert in these kind of things because I've worked in this field my entire life here in Kentucky. Some of the things that we'll study in this course, <clears throat> like earthquakes, volcanoes, Yes, I know about those things. I studied those at one time in college, but I haven't worked with those for 30 years. So I'm not an expert in those things by any means. So we will cover those things from our textbook materials, but when it comes to the stuff that we actually have going on here in Kentucky, we're going to get a lot more hands-on and a lot more detailed in those type of things because it affects us more here in our local area. I'm going to have a discussion board open in the first module. If you have something specifically that you want to know about, put it in there. Um, let me know about it, and I'll make sure that we cover that if it's something that really interests you. So getting back to me a little bit. So again, I'm Jay Nelson. I'm a native of Glasgow, Kentucky, which is not far from Bowling Green. I currently live in Allen County near Barron River Lake. I've lived all across Kentucky from Ashland down to here. Lexington, Frankfurt, Northern Kentucky. I've, I've lived most of it except for far western Kentucky. And I am an adjunct professor, which means I do this sort of part-time. Um, I'm getting close to my retirement age with my primary career. And a couple of years ago, I thought I would just kind of give this a shot and see how I like teaching something I might do in my retirement. So I've really enjoyed it so far. I liked interacting with students. This online thing was kind of neat to me when I first started this. I'm getting more accustomed to it. Truth be told, I like to be in person more because I can see your faces. I can see reactions. I can kind of get a gauge on if you're getting this or you're not getting this. It's harder to do through, through the computer. Um, 
But that kind of leads me to my next point is communication is going to be very key with me as we go through the semester. Again, I worked in state government my entire career. I'm an environmental scientist. Um, my primary jobs have been and still are right now. I manage a few statewide programs that work with water quality and specifically agriculture. And we try to assist the farmers of the state to not pollute our groundwater and surface water. Um, that is my primary job that I do. Now, I will tell you this. There is a chance that during this semester, probably it will happen the next few weeks if it does happen, that I might be shifting my job just a little bit. I might be spending a little bit more time in Frankfurt. If that's the case, that shouldn't affect me in this course whatsoever. Um, it might take me a little bit longer to get back with you in an email or something like that. So if that happens, I apologize up front. Uh, but there might be a s slight time of transition for me. If anything like that happens, don't panic. If you've had any of my classes before, I, I don't think I have any repeat students. I might have. Um, you should know I'm very fair. Um, I'll work with you. If you need help, I will help you. By all means, reach out. I mentioned communication earlier. That's going to be a key theme throughout this entire course, and especially this video right here. Um, if I don't know that you need something, I can't help you. So it's very key that you let me know and communicate with me what you need for this course. It's going to be a typical lecture type course. So I have lecture videos throughout the course. I do recycle my lecture videos, so some of those are from a couple of semesters ago. It will be the most and the oldest. Um, I was going to redo them this semester, but because of this job thing, I'm going to go, go ahead and recycle those one more semester. But even though most of the lecture videos are going to be recycled, I am going to be doing update videos throughout the semester. Um, I plan on getting with you at least once a week and sending out an announcement. Um, sometimes there will be a video or an update attached in that announcement to kind of just let you know how you're doing or if there's something you need to work on. Um, I'll put a little pressure on you all. Um, I don't know what happened last semester with this course, but they were like a well-oiled machine. Um, I've been teaching now for two years, and that was the first class that I had. They all got their assignments in on time, no problems. There was hardly a hiccup at all with this course. So hopefully, fingers crossed, y'all keep that up and make life easier on everyone. So, but if something does come up, like I said, communicate with me. Don't panic. Don't freak out. We'll, we'll work together. We'll get it fixed. Um, I have chosen McGraw-Hill for our textbook and our resources. So you'll be using Connect. If any of you have used Connect before, if you already have an account, you're set. You'll just have to go in and link up with this, this particular course. If you have not, there's going to be instructions on all that in the Student Start Here section on how to access your textbook and assignments. There's help videos. One of the main reasons I went with McGraw-Hill, one was for their content in their textbook, but two was their connect their platform that they have they have a lot of help and the few problems that i have had with it they're right on it every time there's an issue so i'm not a technical computer wizard so hopefully if you have an issue um, sometimes i might be able to help you but sometimes i might have to tell you you need to contact them just let me know if it's something i've dealt with before then i'll be probably be able to help you out if not I have full confidence that they will be able to help you out in short order. Um, I'm going to post this course tomorrow, a week before the semester starts, um, and I'm having trouble personally getting one thing copied over, and that's the table of contents um, for the beginning of the course, so you can just look at the textbook. Um, I have no doubt that, that will be resolved by 24 hours from now, most likely, and, and it won't be a problem. It's just a little hiccup I ran into, and it's giving me an error message. But everything else is fine. All the assignments and everything, I've gotten those in there. Everything's good to go. So, getting back to kind of what I do and how this course is going to be taught. Again, 
I like to focus on Kentucky. I like to focus on our national natural resources here in our area. Um, I work closely with Mammoth Cave National Park. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about that word I mentioned earlier, that karst word. So if you don't, have never heard of karst, what karst means is, is basically our bedrock is limestone in our all karst areas. Not all are limestone necessarily, but most of them are some type of carbonate rock that water can erode chemically over time and it creates holes or voids in the rock that eventually become caves. So a lot of the water that you see falling in the form of rain, if you're in a certain area of Kentucky, this being one of them around Bowling Green in the Mammoth Cave area, another around Lexington up in the bluegrass, a lot of that water ends up going underground. Instead of going to surface streams, it'll go underground and flow in a stream underground, which is a cave. And that presents a whole new set of problems with regards to environmental geology and hydrology when it comes to resources, pollution, things like that. <clears throat> so we're going to get into a lot of detail about that this semester. Or we're going to talk about that, so be familiar with that term, karst, because you're going to hear it a lot. As we go through the semester, I think the first couple of chapters are actually the volcanoes and the earthquakes and all those earth processes. So you won't hear it for a few weeks, but we're going to be, come back to it. You're going to hear a lot about it later in the semester. So one thing I want to mention before I forget, since I mentioned those first couple. So because of the material that we have to cover in this course <clears throat> and the amount of time that we have, I did have to double up on chapters in a couple of our lessons. So there will be actually two chapters included in homework I think two and three is how I have it set up. So I cut down on the amount of questions in each to make it more manageable but there are two chapters to read for the, both those lessons and I apologize for that but we had to cover that material. I actually left out another chapter in the book that I didn't think was relevant because I just I thought the others were more important. So I did that at the beginning of the semester because I know at the end of the semester, most people are busy getting ready for finals. Some courses have final projects. And I knew most people are busier at the end of the semester versus the beginning. So that's why I front-loaded that to the beginning. Um, so the second and third lessons are going to be more material. But after that, everything will be one, one chapter per lesson. So don't think it's going to be like that the entire semester when you get into that. Um, I just didn't, like I said, I wanted to do that up front to, to avoid any problems at the end of the semester. So, getting to class expectations. Again, a lecture course, we're going to have homework assignment and a, ring, a reading and a homework assignment every lesson. There'll be a quiz in each module except for the last one. Um, give you a break in the last one, just don't have a quiz there. There'll be a test for each module, so um, except for the first one, which is introductory. So there'll be four tests during the, the semester, and then there'll be a final exam at the end. So five total bigger tests. <clears throat> the test and the final by far contribute more to your grade than the homework assignments. Although if you do the homework assignments well, you'll be more prepared and perform better on your tests. Um, the homework assignments are in Connect. Um, I used a question bank in those. As I stated, there will be essay questions um, on the tests and the final exam. Uh, I typically will pretty much, before the test, give you what the essay questions are about. So you'll have time to look those up and research those and kind of know what's coming before you actually open the test. Uh, so I just want to let you know beforehand what to expect. So that's pretty much it. The grading is all in your syllabus. Um, as far as the percentages go, I'm the kind of person I would love for everybody to make an A and a B in my course. I'm not here to make life overly difficult on you, but I am here to give you the education that you're paying for. So back to my communication theme that I mentioned at the beginning. If you're going to be late for an assignment, if you have a problem and you can't get a test in on time, let me know beforehand. Don't wait till the end of the semester and think you're going to make everything up because it's not going to work like that. I'm very lenient. Um, if you have real issues, I will work with you. But I have to know beforehand. 
and especially in connect connect is very very finicky if i try to do something after a due date it's very difficult and i've run into all kinds of problems with that so if you're going to be late on assignment and you're going to see in your syllabus that you have two free kind of absences where a whole week's worth in assignments in other words if there's a homework and a quiz both of those count as one say hey i need an extra week to do those and I can put that in the system, that won't be a problem. But you have to let me know beforehand. <clears throat> Hopefully nothing happens, everybody stays on, on track. This is the kind of course, if you fall behind early, you're going to be behind the whole semester because we're covering a lot of material. We're going to be moving pretty quickly through this material, so be sure that you keep up as well as you can. And I really hope that all of you make a really good grade. We had, a, like I said, we had a good good semester last se semester and most everybody did really well they all got their assignments done on time and got them in i think probably 80 percent of the class was a's and b's but they worked hard they did a really good job last semester to get that stuff done um kind of looking at my notes here to see if i'm covering everything i need to cover materials so one thing that i want to impress upon everybody and this was kind of a philosophical type thing, is that probably most of you are college age people. Um, might have a few non-traditional students in here, but I was young once too. I was in college. <clears throat> of course, I had a lot of courses and stuff that I studied. And I fully understand <clears throat> that you're not going to take all this with you. I don't think that my courses are the end-all be-all, and this is so important, it's your life. I understand that. There are a lot of things that I took that I couldn't tell you one thing I even did in that course back when I was in college. Well, that was a long time ago as well, but still, I understand that. What I want to get you to do is think. I want you to learn good study habits. I want you to learn to problem solve and process information. You're going to learn some pretty cool things along the way as we're doing this. So it can be enjoyable if you're into this kind of thing at all. You're going to learn some things and you'll think, oh, well, I never thought about that. It's pretty cool. But I understand, too, that I'm not going to dive so much into this that it's going to be so difficult that there's no way you can pass this course. Another thing that I want to mention here in it's a necessary evil, I think, in courses like this. And it goes along, again, with you being your college age for you traditional students. Is that today we have so much technology at our fingertips. You know, when I was in college, you read books and you studied your class notes and your books. And that's how you learned. There was no Google. We didn't have cell phones that we could take the class with us or look something up in two seconds like you can now. And, of course, the new thing now, and even new for you all, is AI. Um, I've had students that use AI on their essay questions. And I'll tell you right now, I can tell almost immediately. If you're giving me an essay answer that is written better than I could write it, it's probably going to be AI. And the way I look at that is, is I want you to learn from it. If you're just looking up answers on Google and just regurgitating information and copying and pasting it, you're not learning anything. And that might not be too important to you right now, but it could be in the long run. Um, again, I just want you to have the ability to learn this stuff and to figure things out on your own. Um, that's To me, that's key in being successful in life and not just depending on the, all the tools that you have. And I was there. I was in your shoes before. There were classes that I didn't care about, and I didn't. I just wanted to get through them, get the grade, and get out. I fully understand that. But this stuff can be interesting if you allow it to be. <clears throat> so another angle on that is, and this is something that's unfortunate that I have to talk about, is the information that is out there. And this dives into personal opinion about things. We are going to talk in this course about environmental issues. We're going to talk about in this course things that have become political hot buttons in our society, which is absurd that they ever became that. 
because everybody should agree on these things as far as taking care of our planet and making sure we don't kill ourselves. That should be pretty a consensus thing, but it's not. And as we go through this course, we're going to talk about a lot of things that you might hear about in the news. Um, I'll just throw an example out there. Climate change. We're going to talk about climate change. It's a hot-button topic. It got politicized several years ago. Before probably most of you were born, it was politicized. And because of that, we have been barreling down the same road that we always were and haven't done hardly anything about it. Now we're having each year is the hottest year that we've ever had on record. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about something called creeping normalcy in one of our little lessons that we're going to have. And I bring that up now because that basically is the mindset of a whole society that they get used so used to something, it's not a big deal. You grew up with this. It's hot outside. Oh, I'll go in the air conditioning. Not a big deal. You don't think, stop and think, okay, what's this doing to the farmers? What's this doing to our food supply? What's this, what's this going to do to the animals, the, the bombs out there? And as we talk about these things, I just want you to have an open mind because my goal is not to convince anyone about any personal beliefs that you might have. My goal in this is to give you the tools to be able to go and find information on your own that is accurate. That's my goal. If you watch MSNBC or Fox News 100% of the time, you're going to have an opinion that mirrors what they want you to have. That's just the way life is today. And a lot of people like that because it fits their narrative. It tells them what they already want to believe. I want, you to be able, I want you to be able to go and look up this information on your own and make your own opinion about it. We might disagree on something, and that's perfectly fine. In this course, there will be a few essay questions. I'll ask you your opinion on things. We're in Kentucky. I told you we're going to talk about karst. We're going to talk about mining in eastern Kentucky. Coal mining's a big thing. Strip mining. We're going to talk about that in detail. I'm going to ask you your opinion about that. If your opinion differs than mine, if you say, yeah, we should just mow all the mountains down and flatten it all out, I'm not going to grade you based on that. That's not what we're here for. I'm going to grade you based on your your thought skill, the, the way you rationalize that, um, the way you come to that conclusion. You might have a very good reason to believe for believing that, and I'll respect that. So that's the difference in how I look at this. Um, I don't want anybody to ever be afraid in any of our discussions to tell me what you think. Um, I don't judge anybody. Um, I might disagree with you. Um, I mean, that's, but that's that's the world. That's that's perfectly fine, and I'm not going to grade you because I disagree with you. Um, as a scientist, I get brought into these things a lot, and that's why I'm telling you about it today. Because when you study this kind of stuff, you always have a little asterisk by, beside it, you know. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? And somebody's going to try to talk you down off of some of these topics. And as a scientist, as a professional scientist, I get people all the time, the conspiracy theorists, they like, they're, I call them one-uppers. They, those gotcha moments. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? And they come up with all these scenarios trying to make you back up or make you say, well, I don't know. The very basis of science is we don't know everything. But the basis of science is that we're going down a road to try to figure that out. It's a series of tests. Is this right or is this right? Is this wrong? Is this wrong? And it's that is what science is. It's not, I'm always right as a scientist. We're always testing what we think is right. Well, could I be wrong? Well, let's test that and see. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, kind of jokingly, but it's in my head all the time, depending on who's asking me, I get a lot of people come to me about climate, climate change. You're a scientist. I don't believe in climate change. Uh, depending on the person and my relationship with them, in my head I'm thinking, you know, I really don't care if you believe in it or not. It, it makes no difference to me if you believe in it or not. It's, it's a fact. 
it's happening. We've documented it. We know it's happening. You know, it's not Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. I don't care if you believe in it or not. It's it's a fact. So, so I want you to be able to look at these things and come out of this with the knowledge on how you can form your own opinion about it. Whatever that opinion may be. And we're going to talk about these things as we go through the course. So, that's my little soapbox. But we have to kind of throw that disclaimer out there when we talk about these type, type of topics because that's the world we live in today. So, let me see my list here just to make sure I've covered everything. Um, I've mentioned the discussions. Um, I put those in last semester. They went really well. Right now, I don't have them as something that's graded. We'll have one in each module, um, except for the last one. I'll kind of give you a break on the last module. Um, try to participate in those. Um, I'll, I'll start off with a topic, and I'll say, hey, what do y'all think about this? What do you want to learn about? And just reply. You can reply to each other. Keep it civil. Keep it nice. No arguing or anything like that. Um, Google Earth, I mentioned in the course materials to go ahead and download Google Earth. Um, I don't use it as much as I do in my geography courses, and my geography courses, I use it constantly. In this course, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll look at a few real-world examples of some problems in the world, and I'll have you go into Google Earth and find those and look at them from a real satellite view of what's going on, and we, we'll have a discussion about those. Maybe a little problem-solving problem exercise on a couple of discussions is what we'll do on there. So, and when you do that Google Earth, I really recommend doing it on a PC and not on a cell phone or a tablet because those downloads are different and they look different. So all the instructional videos that I have, when you do those, it's going to look different than you're seeing me do on the screen. So on your PC is best for that. So I think that's about it. Um, I've gone over the time that I really wanted to on this initial video, but I wanted to get all this information out there to you, uh, let you have a feel for what we're going to do this semester. And again, if you need anything, let me know. I really suggest to go, go into your assignments or somewhere into... Um, connect and make sure you're good to go on that. Um, I don't want you to wait two weeks into the course and decide you have a problem and then we try to fix it then because you're already going to be that much behind. So so go ahead and do that early. I'll make sure everything's good and again communicate. Let me know if you need anything. Um, one thing I'll, one more thing I'll tell you on that end when we're talking about Blackboard, when we're talking about Connect, um, we as professors go into these things, we see them differently than you do the way we enter those. So if there's a problem that you are experiencing, don't assume that I know it's a problem. Um, I might not be seeing that. So if you experience anything that's an issue, let me know as soon as you find out so I can start looking at it and see if I can figure out what's wrong. Um, it might be not something that's obvious to me that you see on your end. So, and if anything ever, like that ever happens, screenshots are your friend. Um, they really help me see what you're seeing, and I can go in and try to recreate what's going on. So, I think that's about it right now. Um, I'll be back with a few more update videos throughout the next few weeks. And as always, if you need anything, feel free to let me know, and I'll be happy to help. Thanks.